Megan, is it okay if I go ahead and begin or? Yes, you can go ahead and get started. Okay. Can everyone see or hear me? Yes. Yes. All right, great. So we'll get started. Um, thank each of you for being here um, with us. The name of today's workshop, of course, is Seven Steps to Becoming a published author. So we thank Friedman Branch Library for the opportunity. My name is Ms. Anna Blair, um, representing Catastrophe Publishing Company. Um, we're located off of I-20 in Washington Road here in Augusta, Georgia. Our information is available during the workshop or after the workshop if you have any questions or follow-up concerns or would like to reach out to us. So yes, now is a great time to have your pen and paper ready if you want to chart down some notes. Um, if you are inspired to become a published author, then this workshop um, is for you. So thank you again for being a part of the virtual workshop. The first thing I want to discuss whenever we are considering becoming a published author is we may ask ourselves what genre a book am I writing? Is this fiction? Is this nonfiction? Of course, if a book is fiction, it refers to plot, settings, characters, and uh, details created from your imagination. While nonfiction refers to factual stories um, and actual events and people. So today's workshop, again, I want to focus on steps for nonfiction books. But if you have any concerns, just follow up or put your questions in the chat and I will be more than happy to make sure that we address them. So these are the steps we'll discuss today for nonfiction books, um, such as actual events that happen, factual stories, a lot of times memoirs. We ask ourselves, how should these books look? How do they come about? So for me personally, um, whenever I began writing, um, some of my earlier books, which one is titled Memoirs of a Widow, I would consider the structure of the book. And as a writer, that's what we have to ask ourselves. What is the structure, the layout, or the design of my book? For me, um, as a young adult, I was always fascinated with books that, had, uh, that were inclusive of poetry. So I read a lot of books like maybe Chicken Soup for the Soul, um, and so forth, but those books helped me to create the idea of, hey, this is how I write my book. I want to write it with poetry and story, so I created a memoir. Now, your story may be different. Uh, you, you are free today to talk about your story if you want um, advice or opinion, um, opinions about how to write your books, all right? But yes, so we have many structures and designs. Maybe you're writing a book about your, your biography, your autobiography, your life. So what you would do then in that case is chart down events that happened um, in your life that compels you to want to write your story. And just writing alone is going to begin to help you develop your book. The first step is, I would suggest for anyone is to, of course, Allow yourself quiet time. As I always tell people, we live uh, in such a busy society, in such a busy world, that it, it becomes hard to have quiet time just to think about our thoughts and our ideas. So during our first step, in case you, you missed it, it is creating an outline. I'm talking about how to create an outline. So that's the first step to create an outline. But in order to do that, you have to allow yourself some quiet time. If you're a mother, a father, just steal away time, go into a quiet room and just begin to think because you want to be able to develop an outline that's going to um, accommodate your thoughts for your book. So once you begin to create an outline, you may do that using topics, events, dates, or times. Um, I know whenever creating an outline for me, 
I have a sample that I use. And again, after the workshop, I'll make sure that you all have it, that you receive it in the email. Um, but with the outline, you would just create the main topics of your book. And underneath each topic, you have bullet points of things that you want to remember. So the best thing to do again is you want to start off deciding, as I mentioned earlier, start off deciding the genre of your book, fiction, nonfiction. What is it about? Once you create that and decide your genre, go ahead and create you an outline. Your outline does not have to include the title of your book. It is very rare that we know the title of our book at the beginning stages of our writing. So the title will not be as important as you being able to just chart down all of your thoughts. Remember when you're creating an outline that there are no wrong or right thoughts. This stage is not about organizing. It's not about being perfect. This stage is about allowing what's inside of you to come outside of you. So basically just begin to chart down everything that you can remember. Here are some points that may help you. Dates, times, events, topics. So I wanna talk about topics for just a few minutes because a topic is something that's very, very important. And while you may not know the title of your book from the beginning, you should have a topic or a subject an idea. And the reason that topic is important is because as a writer, you don't want to be all over the place writing. So if you have a topic, it's like you have a niche, you have something to gravitate to and something to stick to. So always start with your topic. And once you create your topic, use events and dates and times around that one topic. For example, your book may be about love. So you want to create topics and ideas, events around the word love, but find a topic that you can gravitate to, to be a theme for your book that you can always come back to as you're writing. You don't want to start one place and end up in a totally different area when you're writing. So it's best to have that one thought or idea. You may want to write about children, finding peace in the world. That's just an example. Okay, so you write that down as your main topic and everything else will be centered around that in the book. A lot of times, since we're talking about nonfiction books, a lot of times, and we're still in step number one, which is just creating an outline. So a lot of times we start off with um, what is called an introduction or an abstract. And an abstract of introduction introduces what the book is going to be about. One of the writing styles you may adapt to or use um, is if you introduce your readers to the ending at the very beginning. For example, if you watched a film or a movie, um, something on television, you may actually see where someone is murdered or die at the end but you just saw that small clip and they're about to take you from the beginning of that person's life so whatever happened so that's always interesting if you want to introduce just the ending or a bit of something a high point of your story right before you go into it you may introduce the ending of your life or the outcome, if it's a biography, what you became before you even go into talking about how you became what you became. So that's a way of um, writing. Of course, uh, a style that some writers use is, and you may have seen this in books and movies before, um, but a lot of times they'll take a journey and it's like we're on our way somewhere and this happens going there, that happens going there. So that's the that's way you can write as well as if you're on this journey and things keep happening. So whenever you're writing a book, the first thing, as I mentioned, is to always think about the genre and the style. If you do not know the genre, if you do not know your style, if you have not determined your audience, then you will not be successful as a writer. But once you determine these things, you're able to write a better book. Again, quiet time is just essential. I'm a mother, I'm sure we all have responsibilities, but 
if you're going to write a great story or book um, about about your life or or even something that you created, as I mentioned, nonfiction or fiction, you just have to have time to develop these stories and write it. You have to create timelines, events, draw out your thoughts. I always tell clients, people that writing is a never ending work. That's true. Um, writing is something that takes time and it is a process. So again, this is all in just creating an outline. Um, we're still in step number one. But again, when you create your outline, there are different steps you can use, different guides. Even on our company's website, we have a sample of an outline. And again, we'll follow up with one if you would like to see outlines that we develop um, to help you when you're writing out your book. So step number two is still development of content writing. So if you're creating a book, and again, today is not about children books, it's just about um, nonfiction, memoirs and stories. If you're creating a book of this type, um, I would recommend that you develop from the outline that we just discussed, develop at least 10,000 words. So normally in an outline, you can have about eight chapters and you can um, have those 10,000 words uh, broken up into the chapters, but you want at least 10,000 words because you want solid content. You want good content. So I would say a minimum of 10,000 words before you're published, read, before you're ready for publication. So after you've developed an outline, you should be ready to create your content. So the outline is just the first step. And for me, I often go right into the content while I'm developing the outline because um, using the outline, I create my bullet points of things I want to say, things I want to remember. I, I create my timeline of events and so forth. And this makes the writing process easier. Um, if you're writing a book, I want to give you a tool that's good for editing documents. And that tool is called Grammarly. Um, I started using Grammarly when I was in college, but it's a great tool to use for editing your documents. So you want to be able to start off with that outline and write out your content and develop your thoughts based on what you have written. And again, the outline, again, is just to keep you on point, is to keep you on task so that you're writing about the same subject and your concepts and ideas are flowing and your book becomes cohesive. Because if it's not, then your reader will actually be distracted whenever reading the book. Um, step three again. Step three is to proofread and edit. So we're still on creating content um, from the book. Once you have written your content, you may get someone else to read over it. Maybe someone you know who has an educational background with editing, you can get them to read over it, proofread it, edit. Um, the next step is to file for a copyright. So there are times when people ask me, uh, do I need a copyright? Do I need a trademark? What do I need to protect my book? Well, keep in mind that if your book once you're done writing your book and you're done organizing it and it's, you've proofread it, it's edited, you think you're done now. So you spent time. And sometimes just the first three steps I just shared with you, that was from creating an outline to writing and developing your book. Sometimes that process alone can take months. So be patient with yourself. You may not write a book in one week and that's okay. Be patient with yourself while you're drafting and developing your material and you're reading over it and you're taking some out and you're adding some details, just be patient with that process. But once you have fully developed your story, you've had a peer or someone else to read over for, for you, someone who is uh, who can recognize grammar errors and mechanical errors, you have someone else read over it with you. So that's your proofreading and editing stage which is step number three. So let's recap on the steps we've talked about so far. Step number one is creating an outline. Step number two is content development. And step number three, proofread and edit. So step number four is you want to copyright your book. So the website to copyright your book is copyright.gov. And again, we'll put that in the chat for you. 
but that website is copyright.gov. And you can go to copyright.gov to file for a copyright. Um, copyrights 10 years ago uh, cost it $35, but today copyrights are $55. Um, once you visit this website, you can copyright your material. And the great thing about copyrights is that your intellectual property um, will be protected internationally. So copyrights are protected in each state, any country that honors intellectual property will honor your copyright. Um, there are different uh, details I, I would share with you whenever you're providing, whenever you're filing for a copyright. One is you cannot register a series of work. So there was a time um, when an individual can go and register multiple works for that flat fee of $55, but that's not the case anymore. So if you're registering a journal and a book, you have to pay $55 for each one. If you're registering two books, you have to pay $55 for each one. Um, even if it's a series of books, you'll copyright one at a time. Um, copyright is just a big subject altogether for me because um, whenever I'm working with clients, I often tell them, hey, if you are creating, again, a nonfiction work and you want to use someone's actual names and you want to talk about actual events, that's something that you may document. And let's just say you want to use Mary, uh, your first cousin's name. You may want to get a documented uh, paper or just um, notarized form that says Mary is giving you permission to use her name and to copyright her in your book. A lot of times whenever you're creating nonfiction books, it's still best to use fiction names, fictitious characters, so that you do not put people's actual information in your material and in your content. So yes, uh, content development takes time. There's certain rules with me being an author for so many years, a writer. So there are different rules that I go by whenever I'm writing and filing for copyrights. And I'm very particular about using people's personal information, even if it's a nonfiction or biographical work, but using their personal information in copyrights. But again, with the right forms in place, you can use um, actual names. However, even if it's a nonfiction story, do not be afraid to use fictitious names. So that website, again, is copyright.gov. A question that I get a lot is, what's the difference between a copyright and a trademark? How do I know if I need a copyright? So just to explain that, a lot of times as authors, we have various um, things that we're doing um, as far as our entrepreneur skills. So sometimes we may want to publish a book, but then use that book and provide others with the service. So in the longevity of us being successful, we want to make sure that we have the right uh, paperwork in place. So copyrights are what you use for your actual book. Whenever you've written a book and you want to protect your thoughts and ideas, that story you wrote, that is going to uh, require copyright. However, if you are creating a service as an author, then you would need to have a service mark, which is not a copyright. And if you're creating a brand as an author, you will need a trademark, which again, is not a copyright. So just to give you more information, I'm gonna give you another website you can visit just to help you differentiate what is best for you, uspto.gov. So that website is uspto.gov. Um, we're gonna put it here in our chat for you. It is us pto.gov, and that website connects you to the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And if you read through these documents, you understand when do you need a trademark? When do you need a service mark? Uh, and of course, we're not talking about patents today, but when do you need a service mark, a trademark? 
So the trademarks and service marks are done on a totally different website than your copyright is. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the purpose of the workshop mm -hmm. today, you know now how to look for your copyright. Can, can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, thank you, I apologize. So once you actually um, are ready to apply for a copyright, you'll go to copyright.gov. There are two ways you can do it. You can do it snail mail or you can do it electronically. Um, but if you file for your copyright on the website, which you can register for and upload your book there and copyright it, um, you'll get your certificate of copyright in the mail within uh, about six months. Whereas if you did a snail mail, it'll come in within 12 to 18 months. I encourage you to file online if you can. It's just an awesome process and you'll get your copyright certificate back within uh, six months or so. And again, that copyright is a um, international affair. So that, that protects you internationally with your work. And copyrights, and I'm talking to us as inspired and public, uh, aspired and inspired authors. Um, copyrights last for 70 years after your lifetime. So if you're mm -hmm. writing a book and you file for a copyright, that copyright will last your entire lifetime. You'll never have to renew it. And after you are deceased, it will last for an additional 70 years. So anytime someone is talking about copyrights or writing books, um, it is a great way to get into income and to create residual income and to protect yourself. So you, you'll be protected for your lifetime and seven years after you're deceased. And I think that's just a really great opportunity um, for such a low price online. So I'm gonna take a breath because we've talked about four big steps here. We talked about what to do in the beginning, which is creating an outline, that's step number one. We've talked about step number two, which is content development. We've moved on to step number three, the importance of proofreading, organizing, editing. I told you if you're in your home writing your book and you need some help, download Grammarly.com, that's G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y, Grammarly.com, it is an awesome software. Um, to work with when you're editing your book. I shared with you about copyright.gov. I told you if you're an author, you need to start off with the copyright. Later in life, if you become a speaker from your book, you may need a service mark or a trademark, but you definitely want to start off with the copyright.gov. So that's your website to go to for that, copyright.gov. Um, for local things, um, every state has a site, uh, sos.gov. So you may want to visit Georgia, South Carolina, SOS.gov to learn more about your trademarks and copyrights, depending on what state you may be in. Um, so the next step is step number five, and we're moving along here with the development of our book. So now let's talk about the layout and the design of the book. There are, there are many things that, and I just saw that, Patricia, absolutely, I love to work with you. <laughs> Um, there are many things that you can do when it comes to formatting and designing a book. So the first thing you would do is, of course, decide your size. Um, whenever I have clients, I ask, of course, what is the size of your book? Because sometimes we picture little books, we picture bigger books. But for our standard packages, we produce books that are a size six by nine for standard packages. However, we can do five by eight in different sizes. So that's the question you want to ask yourself um, as you're considering becoming a published author. What is my book going to look like? What is the size of it? How many pages? Because a lot of times, even if you are uh, independently publishing, but you need to hire an editor, a lot of times they're going to ask you, what's the size of your book? 
um, how many words do you have? So that's just something um, good to know as well and to plan ahead. For me, sometimes on my days off, when I have the spare time, I may go into a few stores, Target, uh, the dollar store, just look around at different books and trim sizes and see what I like and what I find attractive. And we can actually produce hard back books. You may like paperback books, but it's good to, to get a feeling of what you want so that you're satisfied when your book is published. I wanna give out just a few more website names because we have scheduled about an hour for our work session and I wanna give us time to ask questions. So I'm gonna move on, but I'm gonna ask that we put a, that a few more uh, websites to put in our chat, Maggie. The next website I'm gonna introduce is press, P-R-E-S-S dot barnesandnoble.com. Press dot barnesandnoble.com. And the next site is amazonkdp.com. So these are just websites that you can actually go in and publish your books as well. So that's press.barnesandnoble.com and then amazon.kdp.com. So these are just websites that you can go in um, to publish your books also. So that's going to help you when becoming um, a published author. And the next step is, let me recap what we've done so far. We started off with Creating an outline, that's number one. All right, we went to content development, that's number two. Then we talked about something that's really challenging and that is proofreading and editing. And I told you, you can use Grammarly.com and it's a great source when you're doing that. Four is differentiating um, the differences between trademarks and copyrights and service marks, knowing when it's the right time to apply for each one. I told you at the beginning, you're definitely gonna to need to file for your copyright. That's step number five, number four. Step number five is format and design. And you can go online and find designers, uh, people who format your books for you. But with our, with our services today, I just wanna let you know that that's going to be a step you consider what size you want your book, what appearance you want it to have, how do you want it to appeal to your audience, um, some people like biographical books, so they want to include headshots and images on the design of their book. That's totally up to you. I do want to let you know that there is not a wrong way or right way to design your book. You may go with something more traditional, even on the cover of your book, and you might want to talk about you as an author, only the book. You might not want any text, just the headshot or image of yourself. That's totally up to you, however you like to design your book. What I would suggest when it comes to the design is um, to make sure that your book looks professional because if you do not look serious, then your audience may not take you serious. So um, whenever you're thinking about becoming a published author, this is a process. It's not overnight, but it's a process. You want to take your time to write your books. People ask me, hey, if I dedicate the appropriate amount of time, maybe 20 to 25 hours a week, uh, how many weeks you think it will take me to write a book? I would say between four to six months because no one wants rushed material and you want to be able to take your time to work through your books. You want to be able to ask yourself, does this make sense? Is this book cohesive? Am I reaching and attracting the audience I'm aiming to do? And there are always different audiences. So you may have an audience that's a college audience. You may have an audience that's a church audience. You may have an audience for a woman who experienced domestic abuse. You may have an audience of third graders. There are different audiences and you want to always appeal and attract to your audience. Why is that important? That is important because if you created a second book, you already have your audience, but if your audience is everywhere and no one can identify with you, then you're really not being strategic in what you're doing. So make sure that you're mastering a niche whenever you're publishing a book. Master an audience because publishing a book is not just to say, hey, I'm a published author, but publishing a book is to say, hey, I am investing in my future. I'm investing in my career and I'm building an audience. So 
10 years later, you know, you can say I not only published a book, but I spoke to this group of people and they were touched and I made a difference here and I did that. So there are several great things behind. Yes, that is the correct link, kdp.amazon.com. There are several things behind um, publishing a book, whether you're self-publishing or if you're going through a publishing company, traditional or non-traditional, just make sure that you're getting um, the experience that you need to cultivate your success later. So we're going on to step number six. I posted those links in the chat for you already. Um, step number seven is after you publish a book, if you did everything that I just told you to do and you took your time doing it, then you should be receiving royalties, which is the great part. You can enjoy your work of becoming um, a published author. So we went through them, uh, those steps, we expanded on some. I hope something that was said in today's workshop has been helpful to you. I am gonna open up and ask that we have any questions. Um, if so, you can feel free to ask me right now. Our floor is open for questions. Um, if you feel more comfortable putting your questions in the chat, feel free to ask. Um, I want to say that whenever there is a book inside of you, I believe we all can feel it. And you know that there's something there and that you have to bring it to fruition and, and, and you have to see it come to pass. But again, a lot of times the question is, how do I see this come to pass? And today we just gave you a few steps and tips to help you bring your book to fruition. Who has a question? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions in our chat? Yes, I have a question. Um, if yes. you're doing an auto, um, a nonfiction autobiography of yourself, do you use your real self or do you just create a person? I mean, I know that sounds kind of stupid, but I thought that you just use yourself, but could you I make up? That was, that's, that's such a great question because what you're asking is if it's a nonfiction memoir or biographical book of yourself, do you want to use a fictitious character? And for you, no. Um, you can actually, because it's like you're the narrator, you're telling a story about your life, so you can tell your name. I would just suggest when you're talking about your cousins or your aunts or your uncles that you use fictitious names. Okay. But if you want it to uh, be named after you or you want to actually tell your name in the book, that's perfectly fine. Okay. And the only reason I suggest people use fictitious names, even in nonfiction stories, is to prevent um, someone later from saying, hey, she got all these royalties. Let me sue for my money because I'm in that book. So that's why I say you want to be very particular when you're using other people's name, but you're fine to use your own biographical information in your name. Okay, even if you say something like uh, my mom or my sister, but you really didn't use their name, would I need to do that for that purpose as well or just no? No, as long as the name is fictitious, then you're covered. Okay. Because you're not using their direct name. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And number six, again, was self-publishing sites. So it's amazonkdp.com. And Megan placed that there in the chat. That's amazon.kdp.com. And the second one is press.barnesandnoble.com. Okay, all right, so. Any other questions or concerns today? You're welcome. All right, so I want to encourage each of you, um, if you're working on a book right now, just to encourage you to keep writing, keep planning, um, and just remember that you becoming a published author is not out of reach. You can become a published author. Um, mm -hmm. Building your audience is not outside of reach. You can do that as well. So whenever you're ready, and if you have any questions or concerns, even after this workshop, um, our information will be available. I would like each of you who participate today, if you will just message in your email so that we can follow up with email, keep in contact with you, even um, keep in contact with you after today's session, okay? 
All right, so just be sure to uh, sign in or place your email in our chat. And outside of that, that will conclude our session for today. Thank you for joining us for Seven Steps to Becoming a Published Author. Our motto at Fatascity is awaken the author in you. So there's an author in you, and we encourage you to awaken the author in you. Thank you, Anna. We appreciate you taking your time out. Um, I think we had a comment by Miss Diane Haynes. I saw she in the chat. I don't know if she wants to ask a question or not. I saw she said she had a comment before you go. Are you... Ms. Diane Haynes, if you had a comment, you can um, unmute your mic or ask in the chat really quickly before we go here. Okay, I believe you're unmuted, if I'm not mistaken, Miss Miss Diane. I'm not sure. I can't hear you. We can see you, but we can't hear you. Okay. So I'm not sure that we heard so you. So I know Megan that I addressed mm -hmm. her her um uh -huh. question earlier. I think that was that probably mm -hmm. was the um question about uh reviewing mm -hmm. step six. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can always follow up with um Miss Blair as well through email. I believe she said she sent out that information, or you can get with her if you have any further questions. All right, so if, if everyone is in accordance, um, we'd just like to thank you again, Ms. Blair, for giving us those seven steps for becoming a published author. And as you said before, um, if you have any follow-up questions, you can always get in contact with Ms. Blair. We can get that information um, and share it on our Facebook page as well if there's any uploads you want us to share with our patrons. All right. Thank you, Megan. Right. Thank you. Thank you all for your participation today. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.